Okay, welcome. So today I wanted to offer a, a little video about the symptoms of complex PTSD, CPTSD. And I'm drawing upon the work of uh, Pete Walker in his great book, Complex PTSD. So, enjoy. So yeah, I've really been enjoying Pete Walker's book. I'm about halfway through it now. And it's really been eye-opening. I've read bits of it over the you know, last five or six years, but really going in deep and kind of making lots of notes. And one of the things which came up was this idea of the, the list of common um, CPTSD symptoms. So I just wanted to talk through, and he says, survivors may not experience all of these. Varying combinations are common. Factors affecting this are your um, fight, flight, freeze, fawn type and your childhood abuse neglect pattern. You know, I would suggest that, you know, many of us who have been to boarding school um, have a very similar uh, type of symptoms. Um, there's going to be differing ones depending if we were a complier or a rebel or crushed. But um, I, I see them as quite similar. So the first one he talks about is emotional flashbacks and how I like to see it. Uh, emotional flashback is like a trigger. You know, suddenly something happens and you just <gasps> you, know, you get this really strong and powerful emotional response. And you just it's like a flashback. It's like and we try to, to deal with it in often negative ways. And that might be drinking, might be working really hard. You know, it might be withdrawing. So first thing is an emotional flashback. Second thing he says is a common symptom is a tyrannical inner and outer critic. So I've seen that. I was talking to someone yesterday, uh, really saying how vicious their inner critic was. And, you know, uh, often I see where this escalates is it becomes self-harming. People will actually physically beat themselves. And that's what I used to do in my uh, 20s. Um, it's been 20 years since I self-harmed, but the inner critic was just so vicious. So we often have that. Third thing he talks about is toxic shame, another symptom. You know, we very, you know, feel such shame about ourselves. We can't love ourselves, often because that's what we received from our parents or in the boarding school. You know, we received that from the environment we, we were in. Essentially, our parents were the children who were in the boarding house with us, you know. Um, so this is really important. And often there was that shame if you were gay, or if you were sensitive, if you showed emotion, if you were any way outside of that really little narrow uh, zombie-like figure, um, then you were shamed. Um, so, you know, this feeling that if it opens up, you know, we can feel <gasps> that shame. If I show emotion, etc. Uh, fourth thing he talks about is self abandonment. And self abandonment is like we don't stick up for ourselves. Self abandonment, you know, we um, don't think much of ourselves. We're, I'm not good enough. Um, this sense that there's something wrong with me. And what I would say as well is that, yeah, we don't take care of ourselves. So, you know, people who have had good parenting learn to parent themselves, right? I'm tired, I'm going to bed, they have boundaries, but often the self-abandonment, you know, we've not learned that because often people have crossed over our boundaries with complex PTSD. The next thing is social anxiety. And I certainly have experienced that and I've heard this many clients. There's this idea that, you know, we really don't like social situations, and what we will often do as we get older, it will be again work or we will um, use drink or drugs to, you know, to, to reduce that social anxiety. So that's another symptom of complex PTSD. Another one's abject feelings of loneliness and abandonment. And, you know, yeah, I felt that certainly as a, in my 20s as a child. Um, and the abandonment, you know, that it was a common theme that friends would die or therapists would leave. And it was like I felt that loneliness, and that abandonment. Fragile self-esteem is another one. Again, I've seen that a lot with clients. 
and with myself and often I see that certainly for ex-boarders is that need to try and prove themselves because they've got that fragile self-esteem rather than just being happy within themselves you know they'll try and achieve great things get everyone to notice them and I see that with our leaders they have very fragile self-esteem certainly in Britain um, next one is attachment disorder I've done quite a few videos about secure attachment insecure attachment essentially if you've got complex PTSD you're likely to be insecurely attached avoidant ambivalent disorganized uh, if you've been to boarding school I'd say 80 70 80 percent are avoidant and then you've got probably 15 20 percent ambivalence and you know about five percent which are um, disorganized uh, next one developmental arrests you know we might be great in certain areas we might be for example great mentally but emotionally there's that developmental arrest we you know i often hear this from wives of ex-boarders who reach out to me and they say he my husband or my wife doesn't know what emotions they're feeling it's like there's they can't even feel their bodies are so dissociated so disappeared off so that's developmental arrest and then that leads into the next thing that Pete Walker talks about, relationship dif difficulties. You know, because we can't feel, uh, because we've got those developmental arrests, then we struggle in uh, intimate relationships. You know, either on one level, we put people on pedestals, or they're these amazing people, we don't see them as human, or we judge them as less than. And this is certainly a thing from boarding school is judgments. Radical mood vacillations. Uh, he calls it uh, pseudo cyclothymia. And I'm not sure what pseudo cyclothymia is. But this idea that, you know, we can be really up and happy and then really down. Um, I don't necessarily see that within the boarding school so much. Uh, certainly there because we had to be so narrow. Um, you know, neither up nor down. Um, but again, this uh, that's not what I've experienced. Um, dissociation via distracting activities or mental processes. So this is very key. You know, um, certainly for the boarding school world, is that we dissociate. If we can't escape, which we couldn't, the only place to go is up into our heads, into thinking or distracting activities it's like right I've just got to keep busy um, so that's another thing of symptom hair trigger fight flight response you know sometimes when things get difficult you know we might not run away certainly if we've been to boarding school we might run away but we will run away into our heads we'll dissociate I'm not here anymore I've gone and if you're in a relationship with people who have complex PTSD you might see that they've just disappeared they're still sat there, but they've gone into this mental process. Um, and then oversensitivity to stressful situations. Whereas if we've been securely attached, you know, and the definition from Diane Paul Heller is securely attached people typically grew up with plenty of love and support from consistently responsive caregivers. And as adults, they are independent and can connect with others in healthy, mutually beneficial ways. So it's this idea that we can deal with conflict, we can deal with stressful situations because we've got a solid core. But if we're insecurely attached, you know, we struggle a lot more. You know, we try and push everything down. But when we get to the 30s and our 40s, there's so much baggage in there. It's like what we used to be able to dissociate, but we really struggle as we get older. And the final one is suicidal ideation is another symptom. And suicidal ideation, you know, it, he, he calls it passive suicidality and also um, active. You know, he says most people when you've got complex PTSD, it's passive. You know, you're thinking about committing suicide, but rarely go through with it. Um, you know, I know a few people from boarding schools who have committed suicide the year below me one of my friends at school um but you know i would certainly 
I tried to commit suicide a few times in my 20s and my breakdown. So yeah, just some ideas about uh, the symptoms of complex PTSD. And, and just to see that, oh, okay, yeah, I know. The more I do this research, the more I feel that, you know, boarding school creates complex PTSD. As I shared last week, the definition of developmental trauma is this is repeated or prolonged exposure to adversity during development, such as abuse, neglect, or being raised in a chaotic or unpredictable environment. Developmental trauma often results in complex PTSD. And so that is what, you know, the more I, I read this, it's like, you know, and his words to me in an email were he feels that boarding school is, you know, is complex PTSD. So uh, thank you so much for listening to this. And yeah, this Friday I've got um, Mark Stebe talking about the mother wound in boarding school, James Bond, Skyfall, fascinating interview. Uh, and then I'm going to be speaking to a guy from my school, hopefully, uh, who was a friend while I was there. So that's going to be really heart opening and quite tearful. And then it's booked in. Hopefully it will happen. I don't know 100%, but Charles Spencer, Princess Diana's brother as well, is going to be coming on the podcast in a few weeks. He's got his book coming out next week. So I do recommend buying that. Okay. Uh, thank you. Take care.